dear listeners, I apologize for leaving you in the lurch, so to speak, about my survival in the graveyard. As you may have expected, the townsfolk of Esther Springs had no intention of killing us. Not yet, anyway. It was this dread of harm, though, that they wanted to instill in our hearts, which makes me still hate and worry towards them to this day. Perhaps more so once I was able to hear the story of the woman I met in the depths of that underground maze. The second incident. Child of Light. I grew up in a town quite like this one. Funny thing, when I came here, I was surprised how much it reminded me of home. The same sounds, the same sorts of people. I guess everything eventually starts to blend together after a while. I didn't have any sort of power, if that's what you want to call it, when I was young. In fact, everything that could be considered a miracle in my life happened only recently. I had come to Esther Springs to visit my mother, a promise I'd made years ago that I was continuously breaking, but the excuses had all run out, and so I found myself sitting on a bus bound for this little town. Esther Springs had always been small, and I never really understood why Mama wanted to live here. She claimed that it was a place that made her feel safe compared to the bustling city that I was familiar with, but it's not like she had friends or even family here. This place is a stranger to her as much as it is to me. But then again, Mama also never truly met a stranger. She could walk up to anyone and get them to tell her their whole story. When I arrived, I found her doing just that on the pews of the local church. Father Drusiah had just finished giving a sermon, and she was praising his speech abilities when I walked in the door. I must have looked so different to these quaint folk. A city girl with hoop earrings and ripped jeans, tattoos on my arms and a belly button piercing. Probably the most scandalous thing they've seen for generations. Lydia paused to give me a laugh. I could tell it pained her to recant this story, but she did her best to stay focused. Mama immediately introduced me to everyone, and I started to feel welcome. I've never been overly religious, despite my Catholic upbringing, but I didn't want to cause a fuss in front of them. Father Drew said I was always free to return any time. They seemed pleasant enough. It's amazing, though, how things can change so swiftly. I only intended to stay for a short weekend. I had work to get back to in the city, and Mama simply wanted to share a Christmas together. I guess... I failed to mention that little detail, but I suppose it's no surprise. Holidays are important. I knew that was why I had to come. Plus, I needed to tell her something important. I wish I could remember what it was. Lydia started to look towards a crawling rodent that scurried through the mausoleum tunnel as we sat and talked, and she commented, It was not long after that. Something strange happened. Mama went to church that Sunday, but I stayed home because I wasn't feeling good. I didn't want to tell her, but my body was on fire. It wouldn't stop hurting no matter what I did. It had been that way since I entered town. This overwhelming pain coursing through my body. It was not physical either. It was everything combined. I couldn't stop it. And I had tried the days leading up to that. Mama didn't know it, but that Saturday, I had seen the doctor while she was out running errands. He gave me all the tests a small-town doc could afford. Nothing major, but it was his professional opinion. Something more than just physical ailments was afflicting. He urged me to seek guidance at the church. When Mama came back, we did that. But not because I wanted to. I actually passed out from a fever, and she took me to the church immediately. Deacon Haverson was doing the midday services at the moment, and when we met, I could tell it immediately he was not a pure man. Call it an aura about him, but I could sense it. I told her I knew what she meant. As a medium, I have often felt energies that surround people, either negative or positive. And the deacon was certainly on the first part of that spectrum. Our current circumstances were evidence of that. He tried to offer holy water and pray over me, but what happened likely frightened everyone in the congregation. The water burned my skin. It was, it was like fire. I could hardly stop screaming. 
But then just as suddenly as it had happened, my body healed itself. I couldn't explain it and neither could they. Haverson called it a sign that I was sent from God and told Mama I needed to be baptized immediately to save me. He claimed some evil spirit was trying to take control, to take root in my heart. But I was scared. If a single cup of water would do that to me, I didn't want to find out what a bathtub did. She shivered as she remembered the next traumatic event. They held me down, forced me to take their sacrament. They wanted me to be a part of their congregation as soon as they realized I had a gift from God. I could feel the water entering my lungs. I wanted to scream, but all I could do was flail and thrash trying to fight. It, it didn't work. The baptism was short, but those few moments will be scarred in my mind forever. Even worse for the fact that my own mother stood by and watched as it happened. She approved of it. We need to recognize God's hand and use your gifts for our own. This place has been rife with tragedy lately, and it seems that your arrival is our sign of good things. Deacon Haverson stated solemnly, churchgoers were always asking for forgiveness for what they had just done. It was empty prayers, but even my mother joined in. The hypocrisy of it all stunned me. I wished that I could use whatever strange power I'd been given and strike them down. Instead, I was placed in chains and locked away. Deacon Haverson claimed it was to keep evil spirits away from me. But that was at least a year ago. And now they only use me like some sort of tool to be trotted out for illnesses and to line the church coffers. I hate them. I hate them all, but I hate Haverson the most. I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to leave Esther Springs alive. As she finished the story, my heart broke for this young girl. I'd seen her aura when I first laid eyes on her, and even though I didn't fully understand it, I wanted to help. Unfortunately, as a medium, my gifts only go so far, and nothing could compare to the will of this maniac congregation. It was clear to me that Deacon Haverson had taken charge of them, brainwashed them into believing that getting their wishes by any means necessary was the only path to restoring Esther Springs. But as a result, this poor, fragile woman had been scarred to her very core. It pained and petrified me to even imagine going through any of that. I had to find a way to give her freedom. We traversed the tunnels for days, it seemed, trying to find an exit. And when we finally did, Lydia warned me this was the same prison where the church had kept her. It reminded me of an old basement with nothing more than shelves of dusty supplies. A few rusted doors that were bolted or led nowhere. So from here, the church will anticipate trying to do you more harm, I realized as she sat down and coughed up some bloody mucus. I apologize for my health. The more I use my gift, the more I feel like my power is draining from me. Another wrinkle in this tale. Her supposed divine powers were sapping her of strength, something I knew Haverson wouldn't care about. They'll use you until you've completely shriveled up, I realized. I couldn't allow that. But I still had no way of knowing for sure where her powers had come from. I gotta press forward despite the danger. Maybe under the cover of the next nightfall I can take you to my rooming at the Grouse? I suggested as I peered towards the clock on the wall. It looked like it was still working despite the age. And so, we waited. And when darkness finally came, I guided her towards the stairs. The church was empty, and I suspected Haverson probably had assumed that we would remain lost for a little while longer as we dashed to the exit. It wasn't meant to be. As we got past the threshold, Lydia lurched backwards as though in pain and collapsed unconscious. I heard a howl from the night across the woods that surrounded the small town, and then looked up to see Haverson entering. Ah, I was hoping we could get the chance to speak again. I think it's time that you saw why our town is going to such extremes when it comes to the girl. She has a name, I pointed out. 
but his self-assured attitude was gone, replaced with fear as I heard a loud howl again and felt the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Esther Springs was once again proving to be no ordinary home for the holidays. We're coming around the bend to holidays, which means that I'm going to tell you guys about a book. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to tell you guys about two books. The Creepypasta Collection, Volume 1 and Volume 2. It's available on Amazon right now. You can find a link to it in the description down below, and they are books that are curated by me. They're a couple years old, but recently one of them got published in Japanese, which is interesting. I don't think you can buy it, but, I mean, if you're in Japan and you see it, I, I hope you think. And as always, I want to give a big thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. That includes everybody who's been waiting for me to update my Patreon, and I thank you all so, so much for being so patient with me. But especially, I want to give a thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fenske, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Tristan Pelton, Acid System, Adam Garrick, Aaron Stormcrow, Ika Limchalk, Amber Clark, Angelus, Atomorous, Bastion Beefcake, Blue the Enigma, Braden Morris, Broken Beast 320, Captain Scurvy, Caspian, Shelly J, Corey Tension, Cronut 509, Crusader Chocobo, Cryptic Nightmares, Curse Pox Primark, Dakota Lane Whetstone, Daniel Paulson, Darth Miver, Deleted Account, Dirt Diver 030, M, Esteban, Fester's Lampshade, Freddy Krueger, Gorag Tri Magazine, Grand Moth the Milky, Hades Nephew, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Harley, Himbo Jerry, Horseman Set Time, Insanity Game Rex, Jay Cairns, Jesus Cornell, Jordan Humble, Justin LaFontaine, Kaylee Ambrose, Kiri the Sloth, Crazy Kid, Cryolinian, Lambda M98, Lisa Cottrell, Little Crow, Lord Life's Best, Lupita Galvin, Love You Eminem, Matt Bach, Melted Lake, Michael Allen Jr. Bashirs, Mike, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Nate Cull, Nico Kyle, Psychomel, Red Shadow Cat, Rob Like Sharp Things, Sam Ahai, Sashi Sasaku, Seclude, Stricken, Tali Sue, Tater Chip, That Creepy Chick, The Ginger Bros, Turtle Man, Voice of Sand, William King, Xavier and Cheyenne, Yargul, and Zachary Graphius. If you'd like to join this list of names that I horribly mispronounce, then please head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, or you can always check out the names in the description down below, and I appreciate it infinitely. So thank you all on Patreon, thank you all so, so much, and to everyone, sweet dreams. <laughs>